recording. Yeah! Get those words! What is up, Woo-hoo! everyone? Welcome to Bit Nerd, your daily nerd on the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. My name is John Polnick, and I am recording this episode from the Container Park in downtown Las Vegas, along with my partner in his studio in San Francisco, California, Michael Deeb. Congratulations on your new studio. What do you guys think of that, guys? Check that out. Oh, man. It's awesome. I, I love it down here. This is uh, definitely a lot better. And uh, here we go. Looking good. Uh, Hey, why don't you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button right now uh, so you can learn about the freshest, newest, latest nerds available right when they come out. Michael Deeb had... Well, actually, I traveled to San Francisco with Michael Deeb and helped him set this studio up. We lifted heavy things, like heavy, heavy stuff. We moved it around. We had to do manual labor. And what did you have to do? Squat, Mm -hmm. nothing, Mm -hmm. bub kiss. All you got to do is hit one button on your computer. Hit the subscribe button for crying out loud. We're doing all this physical work for you. That's it. All we ask is that you hit the subscribe button. We're not asking for money. We're not asking for stuff. We're not trying to sell a bunch of junk. We're saying just hit subscribe. Yeah. Come on, two, man. Two, two things. It's a two-step process. Hit the subscribe mm-hmm. button and then admit it to somebody. Tell somebody you did it. Yeah. Confess. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. Clear, cleanse your soul. Tell everybody you're a nerd and you're a card-carrying member. Spread the word, share a nerd. That means share one of these videos and let's the know that we're out here. We gotta grow this channel and we need your help. And we Please. do very much appreciate you guys being here. If you are new to the channel, if someone else spread the word and now you are possibly a new nerd and you're wondering what is this stupid channel all about? Maybe I saw a thumbnail and it said that they were gonna talk to me about a specific car, but so far these two jerks are just talking about their stupid hat and their dumb studio. Uh, Look, what we do is we find the most interesting car of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. That means we (laughs) dig through P car market, gag uh we dig through cars and bids uh we look at all the dang ads on bring a trailer uh we just dig shift through gate, all this marks. stuff shift gate exactly all these things we find the most interesting one we 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 bring it to you we have a conversation about that car we talk all about it and then we make a prediction as to what we think that car will sell for on its auction now here's the thing when we record the show we're recording this before before the auction closes. So how do we tell you, you know, what happens with that auction at the end of the show? We travel into the future in this episode. We boom, we're in the future at the end of this episode. We will tell you exactly how much that car sold for or didn't if it failed to sell or whatever happened with its auction at the end of its auction. Uh, and we'll have a conversation about that. Play along with us. If you're watching this show right now and you're going, okay, let's, are, are you think you're better at uh, doing the bid nerds thing than us? Let's see. Before you get to the end, put your bid in and and then reconcile it at the end. Are you better at this than us? Uh, maybe we'll give out some swag here in the future for people who are swag. Bring some. We need some guest hosts. Maybe, maybe if yes. someone consistently does better than we do on in the comment section, maybe we'll bring them on the show and have them uh, show <laughs> us up. We'll see how that works. Yes. All right. Yes. Yes. Michael Deeb, today's car is, uh, I think it's a pretty Ooh. special one. It's something that I've coveted for a long time, and Dream I feel like I missed, I missed the boat. These were Dream affordable. Car. They are no longer. What are we talking about here? Look at this thing, guys. JP, check it out, dude. It is a, on Cars and Bids, Doug DeMiro's site, uh, uh, which I thought was interesting because um, I don't know if this is a car he can do well on. And so what we're talking about is a 2010 Porsche 911 Turbo Coupe with a six-speed manual and, I would say, low miles, 34,500 miles. Uh, Again, on cars and bids, offered out of Newport Beach, California. Our car is dark blue metallic. It has a sand beige interior. But, JP, this is the kind of beige we like because it has a black dash cap, and the tops of the doors also have a cap that's black. So then this guy goes and throws uh, black uh, floor mats in there. And so now you've got this sort of two-tone black and beige interior. 
Uh, you and I agree that we don't like it when the entire interior is a light color. I don't even think uh, it looks good, and then it usually reflects light off the dashboard. Uh, this is not the case here, and so I think this this car is really attractive in this colorway. Uh, the other thing this car has, and you can see in the photo right there, it has the adaptive sports seats, which uh, guys like you and I that are built a little bit like Barney Rubble and Fred Flintstone, um, this is uh, these are really comfortable, really supportive seats. Uh, they are worth the price of admission. It really bothers me when somebody spends the money on ordering a 911 turbo and they get the standard seats i'm like what you know what are you missing who's the salesperson that you order that car without getting the good seats uh but this one has them i think that makes it rare we rarely see dot twos with a stick shift uh so this car is super super special uh by the numbers there's really few of them out there this one looks to be in outstanding condition and could it be that this car goes for a sweet deal because it's on you know, quote unquote, the smaller platform or the lesser platform being on cars and bits. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens with this one. Uh, of note, John, the 19 inch turbo two wheels, a sport chrono package. Uh, and like I said, the adaptive sports seats and the manual transmission. The only modification of this car is something you and I would do. Somebody threw a Sharkworks exhaust system on there. So I'd be willing to bet, oh, right on time, JP, well done. Um, I'd be willing to bet this car sounds awesome too because turbos aren't exactly the loudest cars. They're not. They don't, they're not the noisemakers that a GT3 is, um, but with the Sharkworks exhaust, I bet when this car is under full power, it's going to sound rip-roaring. So, John, a car I would love to own. Um, certainly, you could have got this car for around 100 grand a few years ago, but, you know, how high up, you know, what has the, how you say, the tide lifts all ships, right? Rises all ships. Uh, how high up is this car going to go in value? It'll be interesting to see when this one closes. What do you think of this dot two manual turbo? Yeah, it really is a spectacular configuration of this particular car in this era. The 2010 era, you know, is just kind of coming off of uh, a pretty big recession. You may have heard of it, the Great Recession. Uh, Porsche, in response to uh, a drop in demand, uh, made very, very few cars so that they could keep the prices high. Uh, and a car like this also, you know, during that time is kind of is when the PDK was introduced, just a few years earlier and Porsche was really 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 pushing the PDK like they were they were up everyone's butt if you recall uh, probably <laughs> around this era they were talking about um, the new 991 that was coming uh, in just a couple of years and there was talk of like the GT3 of the next generation not coming with a manual uh, so Porsche was so convinced that their PDK was the bee's knees that everyone was going to yep. want it and no one was going to want manuals anymore uh, uh, to find a turbo with a manual uh, this late in the game with a dot two nine nine seven, uh, this is a very very rare bird. Um, you know, by the last year that they made these cars, what was that? Eleven or, or probably thirteen or something. Twelve. Like that? Yeah, 12. twelve. Yeah. So in twelve, thirteen. You know, right. there, yeah. there was only thirteen of them. Yeah. So there. So yeah. I don't know how many of these were made, but it can't be very many. Um, no. This is this is something that uh, you know. This is the kind of car that it's like you got you'd be torn to go. GT3 uh, 997.2 or do you get something like this uh, because it has more power and a little bit more luxury and it has the manual um, if it was a PDK it's not even a conversation it's like not even in the window uh, but now that this car but the fact that this car is a true six speed makes you go Ooh, boy uh, I'm, I'm in love with this car the way it's set up I usually don't like yeah. colored cars uh, but this right. one uh, in this particular dark blue is great yeah, dark blue wouldn't be my first car, uh, color choice. I love mm. Atlas Gray from this era. The mm. irony is that uh, these photographs in this particular light at that hour that he shot it, it kind of looks Atlas Gray in the photos, but it's not. It's dark blue. Um, love the car. Yeah, dot twos with 500 horsepower and like 480 pound foot of torque. This thing is a rocket ship. Um, ironically, though, whatever this car sells for, if it were the same mileage of a dot two standard gt3 the gt3 would probably bring 20 percent, 30 percent more money um yep. so this winds up in today's market uh being a pretty incredible value whereas this car with a msrp of like 140 something thousand dollars um was probably more expensive than or pretty similar i should say than uh, a lot of the gt3 997.2s that were built so i don't know interesting to see how the 
the market has treated these cars, um, you know, all these years later. Uh, isn't it crazy? We're talking like this is a 13 year old car. Isn't that wild, John? Yeah. You know, and the other thing, you know, you brought it up earlier about, you know, being the platform. So, oh my gosh, this is another dealer jerk driving the car with his hand staying on the look guys. Mm. If you make a driving video, don't drive like a jag off. Look at this mm. idiot driving this turbo. He has no idea what he's doing. And, uh, and John, may I chime uh, in because because you've ruined me? Yeah. I've learned so much from being around you. The fact that this car, that the camera is being held uh, in portrait instead of turned sideways to landscape is my biggest pet peeve. I'm like, what are you doing? That looks terrible. I just, I like, I can't stand watching stuff like that. It's really bad. It is maddening. Um, this is a dealer car, though, right? This is not being sold privately. Let me privately. read it to you again, John. Sorry. Uh, let's, sorry. Let's. Uh, b -b 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 dealer, yes. $70 yeah, so doc fee. <laughs> I, I will go ahead and, you know, give them a pass because dealers and particular car sales pukes are usually morons. Uh, they have, you know, something like these guys. I mean, the fact that they put it on this on this platform makes me go, okay, they really don't know what the hell they're doing. Cars and bids struggles with stuff like this. Uh, we've seen GT3s uh, bring them bring money, but just barely. You know what happens oftentimes uh, with with some of these uh, platforms like Bring a Trailer and Cars and Bids. Uh, if the if the seller sets a reserve price, uh, if the bids get near that the platform sometimes makes up the difference to close the sale or mm -hmm. uh if it if it doesn't if the bids don't reach the uh the reserve then they will broker a deal off uh off auction basically and they'll in yeah. they'll, they'll put the two people together Post. and they'll they'll, they'll yeah they'll make something happen and close sales uh and i think Doug DeMiro in his wisdom has done that a few times uh, yeah. where he's had GT3s on here. They've just, they didn't cross the finish line, uh, but they did it after the fact. And it says yep. uh, they have a little moniker that says sold after. I suspect this is going to be the same thing. This is a harder car to sell than something like a GT3. Everyone knows what a GT3 is. Everyone knows that a 997 Turbo is special, uh, but I don't think people on cars and bids, I don't think they're buyers. I don't think the people that shop that site are sophisticated enough to know really what they're looking at. And I think this car is going to, uh, if, if the, if the, if the seller being a dealership that clearly doesn't know what the hell they're doing, if they're driving it like that, um, they probably have looked at some numbers all over the place, gotten comps and, well, oh, this car's worth a gajillion dollars. Uh, so I suspect their reserve is probably pretty darn high. It's probably too high for the platform. What do you think? We'll see. We'll see in just a few minutes. JP, uh, Lots of service records with this car. It also has the COA and the windows, uh, the original MSRP, the window sticker. Which um, was so how it looks much? Like uh, $142,800. Okay. So yeah. do you have a bid for this thing? I do, JP. I just, I'm, I'm struggling to think that this car is going to bring sticker. I, I think it's going to be really close, um, but I think the platform is going to hold it back some. So like in my mind, I think that the retail number for this car is probably a round sticker, around 140, 145,000. Uh, but I think on here it might fall a little bit short. So I'm going to go $125,000 and leave my bid there and we'll wait and see what happens. Um, at 125, um, if I'm right with the number, I suspect you're correct and that it'll fail to sell and they'll either make a post hammer deal or this guy has just done, you know, marketing for a hundred bucks, you know? So on our show, when when one of us guesses the number exactly right, we call it a Yahtzee. Uh, yeah. We have a little competition between the two of us, and Yahtzees get two points. Um, so uh, I am going to go – look, I, that was the number I was going to say, 125. I agree yeah. with you that this thing's worth sticker. If it were on BAT or even PCAR Market, it would get there or better. Yeah. Uh, I could see this car being a record car because of its color combination. I'm with you that it's not my favorite color, but I but I think the market would disagree mark the market likes color cars uh they don't yeah. like the black silvers whites and stuff like that so um this particular car if it were on p car even p car market would bring all the money it would be realized what it is i, I think so too um so cars in bids is absolutely not the place you want to sell a special porsche uh so i'm gonna say 124 um and i think it, doug will probably step in and 
then sell this car after? Uh, so, or well, do you think do you think that the divide is going to be too great? Do you think that the uh, the seller probably thinks this car is worth 150 or more, and uh, there's no way that uh, D- Big Daddy Doug will be able to uh, bridge that gap? What do you think? That I, I I think that that's probably the case. My guess is they want all the money for this car because they've got all the documentation. The miles are correct. Mm-hmm. The color is simple. For all the reasons you listed, I think you've done it. I think you've given a pretty thorough explanation, and I would agree with you 100%. All right, what do you I, guys I don't think? think? I don't think this car will sell post. I think this car will wind up somewhere else in the market. Tell us in the comments below what you think uh, this car will sell for or not, as it were, uh, right after you hit the subscribe, like, and notification button. Uh, Stick around, and we will find out how much this car sells for right after this. Okay, guys, I want to tell you about Vegas Auto Fest. The drivers are coming. This is one of our big sponsors. It's the biggest car show of the year in Las Vegas. It's one of the coolest car shows you can possibly experience anywhere. If you haven't made plans to be part of Vegas Auto Fest on September 17th, then do it now. Go to VegasAutoFest.com and register your car. You think you're a car enthusiast? Doesn't matter where you live. Plan a trip to Vegas on September 17th and come out and see this show. It's like Monterey Car Week all in a day. Have you ever been to the Quail? Have you ever been to Works Reunion? Have you ever been to Amelia Island? All those car shows are amazing and great. Have you been to Luftkult? Sure, but Vegas Auto Fest is something special. Make a plan for September 17th. We'll see you in Vegas. All right, guys, welcome back to Bid Nerds, your daily nerd out on the most interesting cars of the day from all the automotive enthusiast auction sites. Look who's in Woo-hoo! studio. It's great to be back in Vegas, JP. I love this heat, man. Woo. You digging that? The yeah. whole West Coast is having a heat wave. Yeah. And you left. I'm more comfortable place here. It was- yeah, it's like 105 here and dry, whereas back home, it's like 90 degrees and humid. Mm. You better believe I'm happy I'm here. Back so is my dog. We have a producer. Studio. I brought a producer with me, and she's passed out on the Persian throw in studio. Um, if I say her name, she'll get up, so we'll just let her sleep. It's better for the show. But anyway, she's a really good producer. She's already napping on the job, you know? That's basically <laughs> what our other one does. Patootie is pretty much just uh, sit on the lap the whole time. That's her move. Um, well, good job, Shelby. All right. Uh, all right, guys. You want to know what happened with this turbo? I kind of want to know what happened with this turbo. JP, remember that game your uncle or maybe your dad played with you where they go, watch the hand, watch the hand, and you'd be looking at the hand, and then they'd slap you with the other hand? I feel like that's what happened here. You and I both know in our hearts that a 997.2 turbo with a manual is a super rare car. This one is a beautiful colorway in the dark blue metallic with the black dash, sports seats, and all the accoutrement. Low miles, and you and I would know that's a $140,000 to $160,000 car. But you and I got, I, at least I started by being so obsessed that it was on cars and bids and that, that this is the wrong platform and he, Doug DeMiro can't sell this type of car. So I went 125 and you parked your bid. And I mean, right underneath me at $124,000. Doug DeMiro, if he watches the show, is sitting back in his chair, put his feet up on his desk, lit a cigar and said, the bid nerds can kiss my ass because he sold the car for 143000 and get this, JP, 972, is that 997.2? $972 on 23 bids. Not a ton of action, but certainly that is a retail number for that car. Uh, the consigner has to be happy. Doug DeMiro, if he watches the show, has got to have a what are they, the Cheshire cat grin. Is Am I saying that right? Uh, certainly a fantastic result. Um, if it had gone for 125, 124, you and I would be sitting here going, dude, I should have bid on it. But... Uh, Demiro has done well. I, I, I'm not ready to change my entire perspective of cars and bids. I still think this is the wrong platform. I still think that this consigner could have gotten money on either, more money on either P car or BAT. Maybe not a ton more, but even if it was five grand, wouldn't it have been worth it? What do you think? Yeah, I, you know, whatever hiking boots that look like sneakers that <laughs> look like boots that Demiro is wearing, you're absolutely right. Uh, they're right on top of his desk. He's leaning back, yeah. uh, or they're on the dashboard of this car. Maybe he bought it. Maybe he's the one yeah. that artificially yeah, jacked good marketing, the price right? up there. Yeah. Um, he had to sell this car every time he gets something high end like this. 
it's kind of do or die for him because I feel I still maintain that if something like this fails, it has it will have a cascading effect on his platform. His platform hangs on, continues to do well enough. Uh, I'm sure they're making money over there, and I'm glad they are. Congratulations to them for launching this channel. You know, we, we talk about it a lot, the three different channels. The one channel, or not channels rather, but platforms, of the P-Car Market, Cars and Bids, and Bring a Trailer. <sighs> Bring a Trailer exists. It's been around the longest, but P-Car Market is kind of the, you know, they, they hang in there because they're just super aggressive. Cars and Bids has Doug DeMiro, and whether you love Doug DeMiro or hate him, he has the mechanism to drive traffic to his platform yep. uh, that no one else has. Um, it's the reason why you know our friends over at Rad for Sale failed. Uh, they had a great platform, you know, they had a they had an audience, but it just wasn't a big enough audience, and they didn't engage with it often enough, especially online. Whereas Doug DeMiro has a new video every week and every single one of his videos, he says, you know, to the million or yeah. three million people that watch one of his videos, he says, hey, if you're going to sell a car, go to my platform and right. do it. He's going to drive traffic there and that platform is always going to have a baseline minimum. Yeah. Um, but but he, I still think he's going to continue. Uh, I, I, I'm sure he is sweating a little bit when these higher cars come on and he has to make sure that they happen. Certainly wants to make sure that they, they sell. Um, I, I wonder what the reserve was, to be honest. It, it'd, be, it'd be fascinating, but that's a retail number. Even if it's on, on the low end of retail, that's a retail number, so everybody should be proud. Um, and I just play devil's advocate with you for a minute. Did Rad for Sale sell? Certainly they, the, the Rad for Sale wasn't around long enough to see if it like was sink or swim. They trickled just a handful of cars and motorcycles across the block and a couple of pieces of paraphernalia but then they retailed the whole thing to you know a sugar daddy who bought the whole rad franchise and i wonder if the sugar daddy will do something by resurrecting the platform and then using their resources to drive traffic to it and see if there's un like if rad for sale becomes the new kid on the block once again um certainly it's dormant at the moment but it's also in transition so i i just wonder and i'm just playing devil's advocate yeah. um we were hoping for a bigger splash from Rad and those guys, knowing all the the, the following that they had. They're yeah. our friends. Yeah, they're our we buddies. We love those guys. Yeah, we so we were like, succeed. we were really stoked. Um, I tried to sell a, a car, car yeah. on Rad for Absolutely. sale. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, but anyway, to, to their credit, they kind of retailed out of it, and they never really fully answered the question. But they don't have to. Like they, they all went well, and bought new cars. No, I yeah. mean, I don't. I, Look, they didn't though. Yeah. I mean, they, yes, they sold the platform, or yeah. they, they they sold their entire brand, yeah, um, or at least were bought out. They didn't sell it outright because they are still involved. Um, but the platform failed. They stopped operating before it was purchased. I I thought they were kind of honed. the last car they sold was a Milano, and I was talking to them about the result because mm -hmm. I think the Milano sold post hammer to the high bidder kind of thing, and they were mm -hmm. you know getting the the seller and the the high buyer together. And so I was talking because I was very interested in the car. It's a mm -hmm. really cool car. And I was talking with Warren and, you know, it was like, shh, he's like, there's stuff happening. So mm -hmm. I felt like it, it like that was going to be the last car no matter what. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. So I, I feel mean, like they were close enough to say that, you know, they didn't stop selling and then they were lucky that somebody came in and bought them. I feel like the person came in and, or the, the, the company came in and the bought company them. That, and, the company that came and took DWA and Rad Wood. Go ahead. Yeah. They didn't take DWA. Or Those not, guys still it. D, well, okay, so I'm sorry, my bad. Yeah. The company that bought Rad Wood, yeah. um, they wanted Rad Wood. Right. And Rad for Sale came with it. Right. That's the question we don't know. You know, like, we don't know. They didn't want doing. Rad for Sale because Rad for Sale was DOA. I'm sorry, it just was. I mean, again, no. I love you guys if you happen to be watching. Um, and I put my money where my mother was. I, yeah. I, not only were we supportive of them, I took a vehicle that I would have probably sold for twice as much on any of the other platforms, uh, and it didn't sell. It didn't yeah. come anywhere close, right? Um, they just didn't, it was bad timing. I don't necessarily think that they did it. It's not that they did a bad job or something like no, that. The platform, they had it had some struggles here and there, but you know, the technical stuff is happens. Um, but they were just, you know, their audience is 
by and large is a physical audience. They run right. rad for sale or Radwood, right? So you yeah. go to a Radwood event, they have all these big events and that's how they touch their audience. Yeah. Um, and without having that outreach to physical people in, you know, at events, which is what was going on a year and a half ago, two years ago, uh, it was pretty, pretty tough for them to launch that site. If they had maybe waited or if they had come out uh, a year earlier and gotten some traction. I think a year earlier would have been everything for them. Yeah. And, and certainly I think they had the right idea at the right time, but you know, it's, it's tough. They were, yeah. they were truly like any, you know, kind of like startup. Doug building yeah. it from, from scratch. They didn't, you know, uh, bring a trailer was a portal for decades yeah. before uh, before it became an auction site, and so they had you know hundreds of thousands, if not a, you know whatever uh, followers and traffic and things like that, and clicks before they decided to sell stuff. So and, and that's why Mart, that's why Shiftgate. Um, even though we saw some a pretty great result with Mart this week, mm -hmm. um, the jury still. I mean, that's that's still not something that's settled. There. No, uh, that's a good thing for them to have sold that big c4s I, yeah i had a cup of coffee at stratus and they didn't you know they they uh, when i came through the door like oh tons of money and we got these angels and it's they're not going to let us fail and this that and the other and all this money on um you know building a platform from scratch and and owning all the rights to the stuff and it was just you know they you have to have a mechanism nowhere. that drives right. traffic to the platform or it will not work yeah failure uh, to launch a better mousetrap is not gonna work without marketing right you better bait. have to have yeah i <laughs> yeah. mean it, it, it because look you could say there's all kinds of reasons why you could say shiftgate is way better than bat or any of the other platforms or marked um or even rad for sale had a bunch of really cool features they all try to come out and oh we've got this feature or that feature <laughs> oh you don't have to do it it's like it doesn't matter if nobody knows about it you know and i'm always shocked i i am still shocked when i go to car dealers that don't know about bat much less P car market or cars and bids or any of the other ones. It's, it always, it's amazing. What do you guys think? Uh, did, uh, is this an amazing result in general or is this just an amazing result for Doug cars DeMiro. and bids and yeah. Doug DeMiro over there? Uh, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys. Uh, let us know about a car that you think we should review in the future that might be the most interesting car of the day uh, and we might just talk about it share this video share one of our other videos spread the word share a nerd grow the herd we really appreciate you guys being part Smash. of the show we know there are a lot of you are our, our show is constantly getting new subscribers every day uh, and and it's just so awesome to see that uh, and uh, man we just we we couldn't be happier to do this. Uh, it's just so much fun to do it and bring bring up this content. We know we're bad at it. We know we were not very smart. <laughs> we know you don't get you guys don't get much value out of it. But we really appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks for watching, Michael D. What do you want to say before we're out? No! Goodbye.